Don't leave your mushroom harvest up to chance. You've spent hours sterilizing grain, inoculating jars, monitoring humidity and temperature, only to have colonization stall or contamination swoop in in the last minute. Later in this video, I'll show you how an incubator can transform your home scale operation and make it as reliable as the big commercial farms. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm at my farm here in Sedalia, and today I'm gonna talk about incubators and how it will help you to scale your operation. The first step to getting really good incubation is genetics. If you'd like premium, top-notch genetics that have been procured by me, go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. An incubator is a controlled space or volume that controls temperature and humidity. So an incubator is a temperature and humidity controlled chamber. Why do growers rely on them in the first place? If you're running a commercial operation, you're going to want to have an incubator in order to obtain predictable and consistent results. The key variables that you'll be controlling for are temperature and humidity. So with an incubator, you'll be able to modulate the temperature within 72 to 85 degrees or so, and you can optimize your ranges depending on the strains that you're growing to find that sweet spot for rapid mycelial growth. Humidity is also very important. So keeping a relative humidity around 90% is a key factor in having an incubator. This prevents the mycelium from drying out and adds to the longevity of your cultures. CO2 and ventilation is also important and some of the higher end incubators can control for this. So keeping your CO2 levels below 1000 ppms is ideal especially if you have an incubator full of cultures, it's going to prevent mutations and it's gonna make your cultures healthier to off-gas that CO2 regularly. In the real world, this means shaving two to three days off of your grow cycle, which as you scale that up, that can mean big money and big savings for your business. In addition to controlling for the environmental factors, Incubators are also really important because they shield your cultures against contamination or bugs or light, other environmental factors besides just temperature and humidity. The sealed chamber plus the filtered air is going to guarantee that your cultures are safe and protected from airborne contaminants. Minimizing open air transfers and exposure Using a flow hood is all helps to contribute to this, but if it's a peace of mind knowing that your cultures are stored in a really clean and safe environment. And this drastically will reduce contamination and batch failures. A very common question that I get is when people ask me why their cultures look like tree rings and it goes from having a really dense line or a dense circular pattern to a light circular pattern back to a dense circular pattern. And this is often caused by not using an incubator and allowing your mushrooms to grow just based on the ambient temperature. So here on my farm, for example, we get our overnight temperatures into the lower 50s. So this would drastically reduce the rate of growth, which would create a dense ring. Then as the temperature heats up throughout the day, it's gonna cause the mycelium to grow fast and create that thin region. One thing that this causes is confusion with the culture. It can also affect the health of your culture and it's not maximizing the growth rate, which is really important when you're in production. If you notice these rings forming on your culture, you could consider getting yourself an incubator. Uh, 
so there's a couple options to the solution of getting an incubator. One of them is going to be buying a professional grade incubator. These can run anywhere from $300 to $1,200, depending on the size and what features you want. Or you can go the DIY route and build your own incubator. One pro of getting a professional grade incubator is that it's going to be plug and play. So you don't have to worry as soon as it comes to your door, it should be operational. Also, it's going to have built in safety features, warranty. Usually you'll have some kind of a warranty if you buy from a reputable source. The cons are going to be that it's a higher upfront cost and it will have limited customization. So personally, I found a professional grade incubator at a really good deal when one of the labs that I was working at was buying a new one. I was able to buy the second hand one for pretty cheap, like $20 from uh, the owner. A good place to start looking might be eBay or oftentimes at the end of the school year, There'll be college labs that have liquidation events or other companies that might be going out of business. Um, this could be a good place to start to look for a professional grade incubator. Also, check out our Amazon affiliate page. We have a few different categories of incubators listed there. If you don't want to buy a brand new one or a secondhand professional incubator, you can always build your own. This will run you from $100 to $250, depending on how big and how intricate you wanna make it. A common method is to use a cooler and put a reptile mat in the bottom connected to Inkbird thermometer and probe. So this is a pretty good method, but it could re require tweaks as the season changes or other variables start to emerge. like. If you fill your whole cooler with cultures, you might have to adjust those temperatures a little bit here and there, but this could be a fun weekend project and it's definitely a way to help improve your mushroom farm. If you don't have access to a cooler, maybe a couple insulated panels will work just as well, depending on how handy you are and what materials you have available. So incubators will typically add about 10 to 20% more healthy flushes per cycle, which if you consider the DIY option, which would cost you about $150 or so, this will deliver an extra four pounds of mushrooms at 80 to $100 per run if you're doing about 100 pounds a week. So it will pay itself back in about two or three grow cycles which is definitely worth it. You can do the same math with a uh, commercial grade one. So if it saves you about $100 a grow cycle and you end up spending $1,200, then that could be 12 grow cycles later that it will pay itself back. Some things to consider when you actually implement the incubator are you're going to want to monitor your first few runs just to make sure that the incubator is stable. Um, the worst thing that could happen is, you know, you put all your cultures in and it heats up to 120 degrees and destroys your inventory. So be cautious, start off small. And after you have a few good data points, then you can rely on your incubator. So keeping a simple log or temperature log is really important as well. It will help you detect when there's a failure or di different trends that are starting to happen so you can adjust your incubator accordingly. So there are automated systems now, but just checking it at the same time every day or sporadically throughout the day is gonna help you really monitor the temperature and how the incubator is holding. Consider adding uh, cameras or remote access if you're really not going to be around a lot and then that way you'll have the peace of mind and continuous monitoring of your brand new incubator. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on incubators. 
If you're looking for really premium, high quality cultures, go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. We also have a list of products that we recommend on our Amazon affiliate page. So check that out. And we have a bunch of different options for incubators that I would recommend. And until next time, much love.